Hi everybody, it's May 9, 2018. The reason why I have not posted on Never Lose Truth is because I was undergoing my two-week punishment from Big Daddy Google YouTube, the Community Guideline Strikes. I had two on Never Lose Truth, and they give you a two-week punishment where you can't upload. So, I have been uploading on Never Lose Truth to Kafka. The Kafka was inadvertent. I didn't expect it to come up, but it did. That's my backup channel, and anybody who is interested in checking out what I've been posting for two weeks, you can click on the link below. These disruptions have been have been taking its toll on not just me but others. Channel terminations, community guideline strikes that you, you don't violate any guideline. You don't even get to know what the violation is anymore. It's, it's very hard to maintain continuity. So Disabled now is enabled. I'm going to start this um, period of time, period of time that I have on Never Lose Truth, and I say that because those community guideline strikes and the punishments of can't upload for two weeks, that has happened to me before. What was amazing this time was I couldn't figure out why YouTube disabled my uploading function and it was another uh, person on YouTube who posts who left a comment saying you can't because of the guideline strikes you get a two week punishment. Since it has happened to me before I it was really kind of shocking to see that comment because I was posting on Never Lose Truth to saying, why can't I upload? I can't upload. Nothing's working. Um, still can't upload. I couldn't remember. But what has happened to me before? I would get the two-week punishment. I would come back for a week or two, and boom, channel terminated. So it is very hard to do the research, upload videos, when it has happened to you, not just once, not twice, three times, then all the community guideline strikes, the two-week punishments, all of these disruptions are taking its toll. I'm going to start this video with playing some of Grindall61's video that he posted on May 3rd. Epic speech showing how we need to put the coastal elites in their place. And I'm playing this because I I'm using this as an example of what is really the problem here in this country. Our main problem is that our country now has centralized power and that centralized power is in the federal government in Washington DC. So when you are facing a country as big as our country is, and we're all dealing now with the same problems, each state has lost its sovereignty, how is it possible to get people on the same page? To get people in Tennessee to be on the same page as those in California. 
it's it's become the the mess has become overwhelming and if the constitution actually was enforced and we were still this constitutional republic and the federal government had limited powers we would be in much better shape because we would all individually be dealing with the problems within our own community. Now the problems are so wide, spread out, huge for all of us that it's impossible to tackle them. The other problem is our state governments, our local governments, have been infiltrated by people who do not care about anything but their own self, how much money they can make, and they don't care about selling out those who they are supposed to be representing. Another problem is the American psyche mentality and their low road that they walk. We do not have very many people who live the principles that they speak and we do not have very many Americans who are of a high consciousness. Instead, they are ego-driven and they live their entire lives on a low level. It's all about me. And what you will see in this video is this woman who is being addressed by a resident that she is supposed to be representing. And the arrogance in this woman, the immaturity in this woman, is clear on its face. This woman is an example of millions and millions of Americans who are children, immature, ego-driven, arrogant, believing that they are fabulous, and if they are ever spoken to by anybody calling out any of these behaviors that they display, they feel it is absolutely fine to not listen to the person, but then to respond as if they're children. Respond with such gross, immature behaviors. And they feel absolutely fine. It's almost like nothing is within millions of Americans that are telling them, I have a problem. I have to work on myself. I have to, I have to grow up. And I have to deal with the problems, especially if I'm in a position of power. I'm the authority. I have to really think about what is taking place. I have to give deliberative consideration to the problems that we face. No. What we have are people pursuing their own agendas not representing the people. And it has been so clear over the years. But if we keep doing the same thing, it is the definition of insanity if we think that we're going to get somewhere. You do the same thing, you expect different results, and they don't come about, but you keep doing the same thing, expecting those results, 
that is the definition of insanity. We will get nowhere with these people. Oh, we might every now and then get a victory. But essentially, these people are winning. These people who sit on their pedestals in their town hall meetings, now that in itself is a tool. You lift the town council members up. They sit up on the stage in front of those that they're serving and all of them are sitting lower. Psychology. It is to make the residents feel like they are lower than those who are supposed to be serving them. These are servants of the people. And yet, they act as if their shit don't stink and they treat those they serve horribly, despicably, with no respect. So, these people should be run out of office. And you guys in California, you have an awful lot of people <laughs> to, to actually do that. This the mess is too big. And it's very sad to see what has happened. But we do have too many who are just sitting back and doing nothing. And in California, they do have a lot of activists. A lot of people show up for these meetings. Oh, you don't have that in very many states at all. But these people are destroying all of our lives. Destroying all of our lives. These are not good people. These are the worst of the worst. And Americans, when I think about that motto that we have in terms of voting, voting for the lesser of two evils, that should have begged questions in our minds. What the hell are we doing voting for the lesser of two evils? Because when you vote for the lesser of two evils, you still get evil. And that evil, if it is not stopped, it will destroy everything in its path. We are being destroyed. So I just want you to listen to a few minutes of this. She asked each speaker to identify the city where they live. That's a Brown Act violation. Good afternoon. Good evening, actually. This has been such an awesome meeting. I'm so excited to be here. I think it's very interesting. I heard from a lot of uh, Kingsman's residents that they want to deport you, uh, Council Member Mansour, but they don't want to uh, deport illegal criminals. I find that very, very difficult. So, in addition, I think that it's also interesting that we have a council member, uh, a council member Woolley, that doesn't seem to know the Brown Act, and also doesn't seem to know the progression of criminals. So, I have a degree in it. Let me school you a little bit. It doesn't start with violent criminals. So, the fact that SB 54 actually uh, lets the federal authorities in and actually starts slowly, petty crimes, things that start to happen to 
blow these people away in the community, and then we get to the criminals. So why not allow our federal immigration authorities take the criminals out before they've gotten to the violent criminals? And SB 54 doesn't do anything for that, this bully. So why don't we make sure that SB 54 is not supported? Why don't we make sure, and you know what, you can't even look at me, uh, here, uh, you come to the I am, well, I am addressing you. So, okay, thank you. So, what I'm saying is, we've got some very ignorant council members out there that need to actually learn the law. They need to learn what it means to be an illegal, illegal, I'm sorry that I'm too loud for you, but you know what, this is a very serious issue. So, listen up. Now, okay, this law does not protect illegal. It protects illegal criminals. That means that I could go to any one of these neighborhoods here in Costa Mesa and round them up. In fact, what ends up happening is they round up non-criminals and the citizens that are there, so it actually makes it work for your community, this bully. So why don't you make sure, why don't you make and she sure laughs. that you actually stand for our Constitution, stand for the rule of law, and uphold your oath. And I also have a few other things. She laughs, she smiles. This is an example of most Americans when they are called out on their behavior. Bad behavior. How can this woman sit there and laugh when a resident is talking about the Constitution and upholding that Constitution? And this is your representative? She should be thrown out of office. We've got to start thinking outside the box. Outside the box. Don't wait to vote her out. Try to get as many people as you possibly can and you go down to this woman's office and demand her resignation because she is not representing you and that was why you put her in that position. When people fail to do their job, they need to leave. Now, because the problems are so huge, the rapidity with which they are implementing all of these agendas to reshape this country into what a very small number of quote-unquote elite psychopathic nut jobs, they want control over all of us, they stripping away our freedoms, we don't have time. Time ran out a long time ago. And what I am always confronted with in my own brain when I say much of what I have said on YouTube for six years, where are the American people? Why don't they stand up for what is right? Why don't they care? What the hell is going on here? The vast majority are just like this woman. They care about nothing but them, their own self. We have a big problem. And it is with the American people. So when I have said that the American people are our number one enemy, and so many people have come back and said, I am so tired of you blaming Americans. They think it's just those uh, billionaire elitists who are reshaping this country. This woman is an American. She is working for those nut job, psychopathic, narcissistic elitist who want to reshape this country. She is a cog in the wheel. Millions of Americans are cogs in the wheel. 
and they care about nothing but money. As long as they get their money and those who are power hungry, as long as they can get into a position of power and retain it. But what they are doing is implementing agendas that you don't want, but those agendas are coming from those who sit behind the curtain, pulling the strings. This woman is a mere puppet. Um, boy, the arrogance of Americans is really, it is very, very hard to tackle. But it is, it, it's killing us. There's another point that I want to make, but listen to just a few more minutes. The, the, the big red back patriot here that uh, apparently calls uh, liking the patriot football team anything close to patriot. We've got a flag. This is a red, white, and blue flag. People have fought and died for the freedom that we have here. That's what it means to be a patriot, to stand for the Constitution, to stand for this flag, and to stand for the rule of law. And our president, which is why there's so much backlash, because he's the first president that stood up to the leftists and the anti leftist union. Okay. Um, I like this woman. I love her passion. I love her anger. I love her outrage. And yes, I think epic is a good word to describe this speech because we hardly ever see Americans who, and it's clear to me this woman is not just mm, speaking words and doesn't have principle behind it. She's not speaking empty words. You can, you can hear the substance within that woman. Millions of Americans, their word is worthless. Worthless. Because they do not actually walk their talk. Very few do. So, what I have also said throughout my six years on YouTube, this awake term is a misnomer. This is an awakening process. Many, many, many people can see the agendas for what they are but they're still caught in the matrix, supporting, supporting the president, supporting government, statists, believing in government. Okay, I do not consider myself a statist, but I understand the condition of the American people, and I understand that it is very, very hard for Americans to think outside the box, to think of something different from what we have been brought into and lived our entire lives. With that in mind, I then think about the Constitution. Okay, and many people will say the Constitution, oh, that was written by founders who, um, who were racist, who were this, who were that. Look, that Constitution, that piece of paper, that document, was, was unique. And it did give the power to the people. No other country throughout time had what we had here in the United States. Hence the reason this country, so many people referred to it as the country of the American experiment experiment. Give the people the power and see what happens. Well, we now are seeing what happened. The people put in the hands of other people who then began to destroy the Constitution 
it was our responsibility to ensure that that Constitution was enforced. And Americans on the whole believe their only obligation as citizens is to vote. And we've been voting for the lesser of two evil. We have not held people accountable. We have not held any of our representatives accountable for their crimes, for their constitutional violations. We have accepted the lesser of two evil. And in some ways, it makes me think of that boiling frog strategy. The lesser of two evil. Okay, you want your evil to come slowly. Now, this woman is fighting for her freedom for the Constitution, but unfortunately, she's still at a place of supporting Trump and believes Trump is trying to uphold the Constitution. This is where these sick, deranged minds are so thoroughly dangerous because they will do things that make people believe that they are representing them and they're fighting for their freedom and they're fighting to get the country back and they're fighting to make America great again and they're fighting for the Constitution. And because they so want to believe that, they will not look at everything that that same person has done to undermine the Constitution. You cannot have it both ways. You either are trying to enforce the Constitution, which would mean that if that person was serious, they would act within the confines of that Constitution, and Trump has not done that. So Trump acts as if he has his own agenda. And our job is to figure out what that agenda is. But our number one responsibility is to not support people who give mixed messages. And I'm tired of listening to people say, oh, he's just a great chess player. And those lies that he has told, well, that's part of his chess moves. How long are we going to accept people who are showing us on a daily basis they have no moral character. It's the lesser of two evil. Trump has displayed a man of such low character, of just abject insanity, impulsive, which psychopaths are, bombing other countries, killing more people than Obama did, innocent people with his drone strikes. How long are we going to justify our own delusional mind that this guy is actually working for us? Now, I do understand that it takes a long time to finally remove yourself from the matrix. And I do support people who, okay, still stuck, you know, and 
believing that this guy in Washington, D.C. is going to fix things and believing that he's working on the right side when he has shown he is not. He is so not on the right side. But I also understand that you can only you can only respond to what is happening well first of all you can only respond to what is happening in your own community but you respond to that which comes up and your response is based on the knowledge that you have so I hope that this woman does more research on what Trump really is all about. Because she could be a real force. Now she is already in fighting that SB, I don't know what it is, I can't remember the number, in her own community. And I hope that with everything that they're fighting out in California, that they are victorious. But it is so not about this um, dialectic of Republican versus Democrat. This dichotomous thinking we have been so inculcated in that we've got to get out of that dichotomous thinking. You know, it's red, blue, liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. Christian or not, my God, this pitting of Americans against one another, if people could begin to understand that that is what has been designed, purposely designed, so that we continually fight one another while ignoring what is going on. The Constitution has been destroyed. It's destroyed. We see it. Trump, the billionaire good guy, an embarrassment as president, and a threat to world peace. How can Trump supporters not see this? Well, they have to really take a look, but yes, even those who are quote-unquote awake still have within them this need to have what they think confirmed. It's that confirmation bias. You won't, you won't take in all of what goes against your belief. You will reject it out of hand. There is nothing good about Trump. And he is playing. Playing you. If, you know, if we were a, a moral people, our word would mean something. And frankly, I have found that just even the ordinary American, their word means nothing. They like to speak these nice words because it allows them to feel good about themselves. But when push comes to, to shove, and then they have to back up what they speak, very few can do it. And it's easily seen when you do that work necessary to raise your consciousness. It's painful because you get to see how you lived that pretense, speak in those words that were not so real. But it is that personal work that makes us more and more real, more and more trustworthy, and more and more principled. And when the individual 
has that kind of substance, well, that's when they become a force. That's when they can stand up. And much of what this woman is talking about, it is coming from substance. You can hear it. And the fact is, is that this woman does not live in fear. She's got the courage to stand up to all of these arrogant pieces of crap. I'm sorry, but that's what they are. But because most people are, these people live getting support from all of the other people around them who live exactly the same way. No problem here. Hey, we'll talk about all of those residents when we go back into our offices. And we'll get an awful lot of support from all of those arrogant Americans who are implementing all of these agendas. And we'll get an awful lot of support from all of the Americans who believe that being passionate means you're crazy. Speaking with a tone that is angry is bad. That's bad behavior. Can't do that. Uh-uh. You're bad. You got angry. Oh. You know, even when you speak with frustration, it's almost as if Americans don't even have that nuanced thinking. They don't have the ability to recognize nuance, to recognize subtle differences, because they have been trained to think in a dichotomy. You're either angry or you're not. No, there's a lot in between that. And so when you really give a lot of thought to that, you go, oh, wow, Americans, just ordinary Americans, our friends, our family, our co-workers, everybody is like a con control freak in this country, controlling the behaviors that they deem unacceptable, getting angry and outraged and voicing it. Most Americans, they shun people who are like that. Uh-uh, I'm not going there. And yet, what they are saying is absolutely, it's true. It's the truth. But the truth does not matter to most Americans. And, yeah, you know, it's because we have, on the whole, American child adults, adults who have never grown up and never matured, they get scared of people who are voicing that kind of outrage. It's scary to them. You have to present the material in a very, very candy-coated, soft way for them who are adults? No, I say those adults grow up. We're at war. We're losing our life. People are dying in this war. People are being destroyed. Our lives are being brought down. And you need that soft NPR voice to tell you what is going on. No, sorry, unacceptable to me. It is everybody's individual job, their responsibility, their obligation to grow up and to listen to what people are saying. And because things have 
become so, life here in this country ha, has become intolerable for so many people because so many people are immoral and because we have children being destroyed by the vaccines, by the GMO, uh, GMOs, by psychiatric medications. We've got a quarter, uh, one-fourth of our population on psychiatric medications. We have spraying of toxic chemicals and metals, and so many people are getting sick. Our water is poisoned. We have increasing numbers of people going homeless. We still have banks stealing people's homes. We've got weather wars taking out whole towns. We have our government unleashing, you know, what was it, 50 plus inches of rain in Houston in four days and flooded out over a million homes. And then we have FEMA coming in buying up those homes. We have people who are actively involved in putting together a reshaped country into mega regions where everybody will be controlled by government. And we do already have millions of people who have already experienced shit hits the fan and we've got an awful lot of people who understand that these agendas are rolling on, but they believe the shit hits the fan is coming. No, it's the boiling frog scenario. And eventually it's going to come to your door. No, there's not going to be any huge event in my mind. I don't believe that that's going to happen. I believe that they are going to continue the boiling frog scenario. And they're just literally manipulating the herd into the mega regions and killing off the numbers that they want to kill off. Now I'm not saying there won't be some huge event like an EMP attack or, but what I am saying is there are so many who are on a different page in this community believing that the shit that hits the fan hasn't come because it didn't come to you. No, it's come to millions of Americans already. And without some work on our psyche, our mentality, um, asking ourselves, am I really seeing the big picture or am I just living in a bubble, taking in information that is the information that tells me things are not that bad or information that tells me Trump is trying his best, information that says, oh, the economy is doing much better under Trump when it's not. You're being lied to. Why do you think one guy comes into Washington and suddenly everything changes and now the reports from mainstream media and our government, now they're not lying? Trump has proven himself to be a liar over and over again. But you believe liars? There are so many problems. It's not just Agenda 21, 2030. It's not just the chemtrails. It is not just uh, the wars in the Middle East. There are so many individual problems within that individual that does not allow them to think clearly and then to act decisively. Now, I'm not saying that that woman has not done that. In fact, she has based on the knowledge that she has. She's very articulate. She knows her stuff. She gets up and she's not afraid to speak her mind and speak with passion. Because clearly she's not afraid of somebody coming up and saying, you know, you didn't really sound very nice. And nice is really important. Get over that, please. Nice will get you killed. Nice is the persona that you carry out into the world and it ain't real.
Look, our Constitution is pretty much gone. While we fight these agendas, so much is going on behind the scenes. While we listen, excuse me, while we listen over and over and over again to the same, oh, it's the, the Russian probe and, and Trump and Mueller and Stormy uh, Daniels, what, what's that porn star's name? And while we listen to talk show hosts claim that, you know, Assad is that animal that Trump says, and we've got to get rid of him, and we listen to these talk show hosts talk about the, uh, <laughs> oh God, Iran. Uh, yeah, that's the evil empire, and it, a country that has not attacked another country in centuries, but we attack country left and right. Um, you're, you're, everything that you hear on mainstream media and coming out of Trump's mouth and coming out of our government is the staged play. Oh, Trump now on Drudge, I guess. It's, it's how great he is doing. Look, he has negotiated. He's a negotiator. He's a brilliant negotiator. And wow, look at what he has done with North Korea, right? Brilliant. North Korea releases American prisoners. Trump to greet at 2 a.m. Trump. Oh, he is making America great again. North Korea has been the puppet state of the United States since we destroyed it during the Korean War. <clears throat> Boy, did we unleash an evil on Korea in the 50s. So they have been used as a scapegoat and do not think for one second that, you know, America and Trump, that this is happening right now because Trump is in the office? No. This is also another staging to get his supporters to stay on that page, to support him. When in fact, if you really look closely at what else is going on, you will see that either Either he is just a puppet being used by those who want to take over the world, the globalists, and yada, 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 or he's really schizophrenic. Make America great again. The Constitution means something, and then he violates it. So, people of principle stand firm. If you finally get your place, get yourself on the road of truth, it means you cannot lie. It means that truth is propelling you. It is guiding you. It pushes you forward. And that truth is not selective. You don't get to select out the truth and call yourself, quote unquote, a truther if you are not living the principles that you speak. If you lie, you ain't a truther. If you're still living a lie, living that pretense, you ain't a truther. If you have not done the work, to get very clear and to recognize that truth is the most important character, most important principle that we honor. If you don't understand that, you're still lost. And this guy doesn't understand it. And that makes him dangerous. We have played these games. They've been going on for 59 years, my entire life. Listening to liars, supporting liars, supporting people of low character, 
supporting the worst of the worst. They throw out a bone, and then we <gasps> ah, grab it onto it. Oh, okay. He's going to turn things around. No, he is not. No, he is not. Now, I posted a video on Never Lose Truth 2, um, Kafka, about this. Get it. You know what is really striking? That since 9-11, we have seen our Congress, our Presidents, Supreme Court, destroying our Constitution, claiming it's for our security. That Constitution, if enforced, gave us the security. The destruction of it leaves us very insecure because you don't have security in a police state. But we have seen over and over again outrageous acts of unconstitutionally unconstitutionality coming out of Washington, D.C. And crickets is what you hear from the American people. Crickets. The authorization for use of military force. Unlimited dictatorial power being put in the hands of Trump. Now, we have now presidents who act like dictators, kings. Obama did it, Bush did it, but each successive president does it in a more exaggerated manner and still crickets, still crickets. The Constitution gives Congress the authority to declare war. The founders explicitly denied giving that power to the president that power residing in one person essentially puts a throne on that one person's head, making them a king, a queen, establishing a country no different than a monarchy or a dictatorship. That was the intent, the American experiment. We're not going to have a dictator. We won't have a monarch. So. It was because the founders believed that acts of war require careful debate. So they gave the authority to Congress. We have not had any debate in a very, very long time. What the hell is wrong with Americans that they can't see that Obama acted unconstitutionally going into Libya, creating these no-fly zones. Um, we violate international law as if there is no international law, as if we are the globe. We can do whatever the hell we want. We watch Trump come into office and bomb Syria. Uh, like it was, oh, wow, okay. You're coming out with that narrative that is a complete lie, Assad used chemical weapons, and Trump just bombs. Uh, complete violation of the Constitution. But what you're hearing are all of these Democrats who are like Maxine Waters? Really? We've got to impeach him? But you don't hear anyone talking about impeaching him on declaring war, which we had that war going on anyway, but you drop a bomb on a country, that is a declaration of war. Where are all the calls from the Democrats to impeach him on actual violations? Instead, they do that, you know, that it's uh, theatrics. It's political theater in Washington to get you all riled up. But, 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 Get it? Worthless. Meaningless. Americans, you are being fed such crap. And you keep lapping it up. So, 
considering what has happened to the Constitution. Let's just think in terms of 9-11. Now, I, I understand that the Constitution was dead, you know, a long, long time ago. And I understand that our government is a corporation. And so don't, you don't think that I don't understand that. I do. But I'm talking to those Americans who still actually believe that we have this Constitution somehow. Um, and their, their silence in terms of watching it be destroyed. Now, they watched Obama do away with their due process rights in the National Defense Authorization Act. Due process. That is what distinguished us as unique from all other people in the world. Our due process rights. We get to know why we are being arrested. We get to know the charges. We get to know the evidence. We get to um, hire an attorney. We get, well, it's supposed to be a speedy trial, but many innocent people who have not even been charged are still sitting in jail and have been for a long time. And many who have been charged but not found guilty are sitting in jail. And we're talking thousands of people who have not been found guilty are still sitting in jail two years and over. Okay, so speedy trial, forget about that. But you have a right to defend yourself based on the charges and evidence that has been put before you. All of that is gone. You had to write a, a right to live free from military walking on your streets, coming into your home, grabbing a family member, holding them indefinitely, not even uh, telling you what the charges are, why the military is holding them. You don't have that right anymore. Obama destroyed that right. Trump now is coming into office, and Congress is about to hand him this authorization for use of military force, which allows Trump to declare war on individuals. It, even in the legislation, the authorization for use of military force, declares war on about 20 countries and the president can do it by writing a paragraph to Congress. That's it. When you see Congress giving away its authority to the president, you know that there is a deliberate agenda to destroy your freedoms, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the Constitution, and everything. You know that there is a deliberate agenda. It should beg questions in people's minds. Where are those minds? Now, we have seen the Constitution be amended by every branch of government. The executive branch, the president with its executive orders, has usurped the legislative authority of Congress. We now have presidents writing legislation with their executive orders, and Americans have been silent. We have the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, rewriting the Constitution. They're supposed to be interpreting the Constitution. But our Supreme Court has shown us over and over and over again, making their voice louder and louder, that they are not about the Constitution, but they are about destroying our constitutional rights. It has been shown, it's clear, it's loud, it's right in our face. And what do we do? Nothing. Supreme Court ruling that allows strip searches for any arrest, traffic violations. You can be strip, search, strip searched. Um, the Supreme Court has ruled uh, that Oh, police mistakes, we're going to forgive them over and over. We're going to forgive them. So we now have a Supreme Court 
that allows warrantless searches of homes and cars and persons. And if it's a reasonable mistake by the police, then it's forgiven. It's not a constitutional violation. They rewrite the Constitution. And we've allowed that. Uh, evidence obtained illegally by the police used to be inadmissible in court. It was because there's a constitutional violation if the police have attained, obtained that evidence illegally. So the person's constitutional rights were violated. Now, it's fine. Over and over and over again have we seen these branches of government destroy the Constitution right smack in our face, telling us along the way. And we've done nothing. We've accepted it. Well, they're the Supreme Court. No. These are nine people who have been put in those positions deliberately to destroy the Constitution. We do not have a democracy. And how many times did I say to Americans who said that we were a democracy, we're not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic, and most didn't even know what that meant. So yes, the ignorance is loud and clear and only swelling every single day. When you see this, This authorization for the use of military force, Congress handing to the president the authority to declare war. You not only see that that in itself begs an awful lot of questions that people who have power, they're just willy-nilly giving it to someone else. Most people who have power want to retain that power. So that begs questions. Question, what the hell is going on that someone wants to give away their power when we all know that these people in on Capitol Hill, they love their power. So you have to think, what is going on behind the scenes that is making this happen? But what they are doing is amending the Constitution. Amending the Constitution. So, what does that entail? What does that require? Does it require legislation coming out of Congress? Is that how we amend the Constitution? You amend the Constitution by either getting two-thirds of both houses, the Senate and the House, to propose an amendment, or two-thirds of the state legislatures that call a convention proposing an amendment. And then you need to have the amendment ratified by three-quarters of state legislatures. It is a very long and arduous process that was a deliberate intention of the founders so that that Constitution doesn't get willy-nilly amended, as Congress has been doing over and over and over again, as the Supreme Court has been doing away with our Fourth Amendment right trying to do away with the Second Amendment, First Amendment, all of the amendments. The Tenth Amendment is completely destroyed. Tenth, tenth Amendment. That is the crux of our constitutional republic giving the states more power than the federal government. So, we don't, we don't even change the Constitution the way it's supposed to be changing. No, we just allow people who have their own agenda to go about doing it.
So, look, we're in a really dangerous, dangerous time. Trump, even if, even if you believed that Trump is doing his best and he's fighting the deep state and he's trying to get rid of the swamp, which is really amazing that anyone could believe that because this guy has put the swamp right back into his administration, the swamp that was right there with Bush, Bolton, all of these neocons. He bends to Israel and he is so disgustingly immature, bully, impulsive, uh, all of these characters, clearly unpresidential, at least Obama had the facade of being somewhat presidential, but hard to see that when you know, you know what that guy was about. But with Trump, yeah, oh my God, you see someone who, yeah, has billions of dollars, lives in a palace, and what does it matter? Um, there's no moral core in that guy. So, I, I just, I don't know. You can't go. You cannot support this Trump and realize that he too is about to be handed dictatorial power though we have seen the executive branch just obtaining more and more dictatorial power and Trump already has the dictatorial power because he can just bomb a country without even notifying Congress. We've seen it. It's there. They're codifying now. They're making legal constitutional violations. And they're giving now this country a dictator, codifying it. Get it? Things are really bad. Things are very bad. So we can, you know, continue to fight one another. We can continue to call out people as shills with no evidence. We can continue acting like immature seventh graders, never getting on the same page. Oh, you're not Christian. Oh, I thought you were. And, well, you're a shill. And we, we can just continue the idiocy that we see taking place with all of those Americans who just don't care about anything, so many of the behaviors are exactly the same as what we are seeing and being uh, degraded by those who call us conspiracy theorists and everything. So many behave exactly the same way. You just have a little bit of knowledge about what is taking place. Anyone who is still posting videos claiming that this person's a shill and this person is supporting them and yada yada, you are so focused on the wrong topics. Your focus, you need to think about your focus. You need to think about your thinking. You need to be primarily guided by truth, trying to get the right information, not bringing other people down. We need trust here, and we don't have it. It's been destroyed. How does trust get destroyed? It gets destroyed by liars. It gets destroyed by those who deceive. It gets destroyed by all of the divide and conquer that an awful lot of channels are engaged in right now. And have been, certainly since I 
uh, appeared on YouTube for what, six years ago, and it's only gotten worse. You have people who are saying the only legitimate channels are those who talk about Jesus having died on the cross for us? Are you kidding me? You get people who are all about blaming the Jews. It's the Jews. That kind of thinking. They don't even, they can't even see that <laughs> the Jews are a tiny, tiny segment of our con of our country, uh, but they're also a tiny segment in the world. And those Jews, man, they have so much power that they influence 90% of the American Christian population. Ameri Christians have been the largest majority, 90%. Now it's 74%. You're still a huge majority, and you're blaming Jews? Not understanding that if you did live the principles that you speak, then that community would be so strong, it would not have been able to be influenced by that tiny, tiny segment of the population. But anybody who's still writing those comments. It's the Jews. You really need to reevaluate that. The Jews on the whole are no different from Americans on the whole. And there are an awful lot of Jews and Israelis protesting their government, getting out on the streets, do some research sort of claim that it's Jews, as if Christians are, oh, we're on the good side, Jews are on the bad side. Really? No, sorry. Christians are living a pretense, the majority. Very few people are of character, good moral character. Few. The majority? the masses, the ignorant, those who are arrogantly ignorant are dangerous, and most don't care about anything but their own life. And that includes Christians, but it includes those who are on this low level of consciousness, never taking a look at how they live, not facing themselves in the mirror, never reevaluating any of the beliefs that they have. Therefore, they don't understand where they got those beliefs, so they don't understand their own self. They've just adopted someone else's belief and they carry it through adulthood but that leaves that person without substance. They're empty inside because they haven't done the reevaluating of their the myths that they believe, the, the beliefs that they have, how they live their life. They haven't asked themselves this question, am I living what I talk? And without that, you just have an awful lot of people. It does not matter how much knowledge they have. Don't matter if they're quote unquote awake. It does not matter. They will not do a thing. They will not act because they still live fear, not love. And I don't mean the sentimental, oh, I love you, love you. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about the love of truth or that love of God or that love of Jesus. No, there's an awful lot of people who claim they do, but they're still living in fear and they're still using all of the justifications that they can possibly manufacture in their mind to feel good about doing nothing. Like saying, oh yeah, it's upsetting about what's happening, but I take comfort in the fact that all of this is written in the Bible.
I take comfort because this was, well, it was all planned. It's God's plan. I take comfort. I will tell you that Jesus is not taking comfort. Not taking comfort in the millions who use his name to make their own self feel like they're better than. And that is taking the Lord's name in vain. The millions who claim his name while they lie and live a pretense and don't genuinely care about anything and take comfort in a time when we are seeing suffering increase on a daily basis of all life, their own fellow human beings, species, the evil so now out of control that it's become almost accepted practice. Why? Because people, the majority, sit back and do nothing. They want to be comfortable. Oh, I can't talk like that. No, because that's not nice. And you got to, you know, make sure that your tone is acceptable. Well, let me tell you something. We are at war and people are dying and you know what? You scream. You scream. Yeah, it would be acceptable if bombs were falling or bullets flying past your face. So many people claim that they know that we are at war. And they go about doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, like robots. They wake up and they do the same thing every single day, doing nothing at all to try to fight what we are dealing with here. Nothing. They contribute nothing. But claim claim that they are good people and they don't yell so they're nice. They lie, they don't take responsibility for it, they betray, they hurt, they behave essentially just like those in Washington DC that they rail against. The behaviors, no different. Perhaps the damage footprint is a little less because uh, they're just damaging those around them where those in Washington, D.C. are their footprint dropping bombs on countries. But the behavior is essentially the same. And until we get people behaving morally, righteously, principally, and and actually speaking the truth we will get nowhere nowhere and we have to demand that this constitution be enforced we've got to reclaim that constitutional republic we've got to demand it of our governors and our state legislatures and how many Americans will do that? No. They want their paycheck. They want to shop. They want to watch TV. They want to just do what they are interested in and leave me alone. So it allows all of these people to just do whatever the hell they want to do unless you have people like this and a whole lot more acting like this, supporting this, and seeing this as the appropriate good behavior instead of seeing that 
oh, well, yeah, I asked, and I asked in a nice way, and I was turned down, so it's okay, you know. No, it's not okay. It's not okay anymore. So, look, you know, get it. Get it. You think Trump is not going to sign this? You think Trump cares about the Constitution? You think Trump really cares about a making making America great again for all of us? Do you really think that he cares about you? And those who claim he's a good Christian, Jesus. <gasps> something is wrong with you. You've got to take a look at what it means to be a good Christian. You have Jesus as an example. Do you think Jesus would be behaving like Trump? Really? Do you think Jesus would conceal the billions upon billions of dollars he had and do nothing to help those in need? Do you think Jesus would drop bombs on innocent people? Do you think Jesus would lie and lie and lie again? What is wrong with Americans? We have a very sick and deranged population. And it's not just because of the increase of the poisonous food, air, and water. We have had this deranged population from the start, believing that God granted us this country, and in Jesus' name, we committed near genocide, we raped, we pillaged, we stole, we lied, we betrayed, we never honored our word, we caused Tremendous suffering to the native people who were here before. We stole their children and stuck them in our Christian indoctrination schools from the start. Something has been very wrong with the American people. 